my dear friends, uh, we have the most anticipated talk of this webinar. Our keynote speaker of the day, Mr. Sharfuddin Sufi, an eminent speaker who will be delivering a short lecture on the topic of harmonious and inclusive society, the spirit of Indian constitution. Before I invite our distinguished speaker, uh, it is yet again my privilege to introduce him. Sharfuddin Sufi has been a faculty of management and he's an MBA in marketing. He is an international speaker, orator, and a khatib. A khatib is someone who delivers a sermon on a Islamic Friday prayer. He has delivered speeches in Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, India in different languages. He is also an author and a translator. Sharfuddin Sufi, may I invite you to take it over from me and begin with your presentation. Good evening, all of you. President of Indian Muslim Association, Mr. Shamvil Parvez, other office bearers, and convener of today's program, Mr. Abdul Musavir, chief guest of uh, today's function, my friend, Dr. Vinod Gover, also my other friends and chief dignitaries of today, Thomas Panikar, Venkata Shivarav, Suresh KP, and Stephen Rego, and all my dear friends, men and women from all faiths today. I have been given a very interesting topic, which is harmonious and inclusive society, the spirit of Indian constitution. This subject, as you all know, to commemorate the Republic Day of India, but because of the convenience of our expatriate workers in Kuwait, uh, the organizers have shifted it for three days and uh, arranging it on 29th instead of 26th for the convenience of the participants. This is a very important subject. So make it more interesting, I'm telling you two stories. One story in the beginning, one story in the middle of the my lecture, and uh, at the end I will present to you a small poetry. So I think it will make you the subject more interesting. And uh, let me also clarify that I am not from the law background and I'm not an expert in Indian constitution, but it is a responsibility of the every layman to understand the constitution and to think about it and to practice it. So in layman's perspective and every individual's perspective, I'm going to present to you Indian constitution today. So let me begin with the story. There was a boat and some people were traveling in the boat. And there were two decks, upper deck and lower deck. And water facility was available only in the upper deck. So people, whenever they wanted to get their water, they were supposed to go to the upper deck. After some time, they got fed up. They said, why can't we have our own water in our you know, lower deck? They said, let's make a hole in the ship in a boat so that we can get, get our, you know, then uh, some people went and complained to the people upper deck. They said, some people are trying to make a hole in the boat. And this by this foolishness, they think that they can get water by themselves. So gentlemen, some of them, they said in the upper deck, let them do whatever they want. It's their botheration. Why should we bother about it? We have our water anyway. Let them do whatever they want. So what happens in this case, if there is, if they may, anyone makes hole in the boat, the whole boat ultimately will sink. So it is the responsibility of everybody who are on board to prevent them from harming the boat or making a hole, because ultimately it is, it sinks the whole boat and everybody on the boat, on board will sink. So this example is given actually by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him in his one of the sayings highlighting the responsibilities towards the society social engagement towards the society so we all should have a social engagement towards the society indian constitution is our guiding force as many of our speakers said if somebody is going against the spirit of indian constitution it is our responsibility to prevent them from doing so and to encourage people to live up to the spirit of Indian constitution. Let me give a brief introduction of founding father of Dr. Ambedkar as well, who is the father of our great Indian constitution. It is our luck that we have such a personality, Dr. Ambedkar, 
he was not the only person anyway there are hundreds of people they were part of this formation of the constitution led by dr b r ambedkar you all know his name he is bhim rao ram ji ambedkar and he had a very humble background and he had experienced lot of bias and discrimination as a young person because he was from the untouchable community so when a person of this background comes and forms the constitution naturally there will be more emphasizes for the equality and for the opportunity for everybody so this is the good thing and he envision as as india for all instead of only a privileged class so this is uh, the important thing that he made, made sure that india will have a privilege for everybody will have an opportunity for everybody or no discrimination or extra privilege based on religion caste or language so this is another thing which is ensured in the constitution also you can see some of the other salient features of indian constitution which all we all should remember every time and we should always you know preach each other these things and to ensure that these qualities are always prevailed and uh, the indian constitution came into existing existence after studying almost 60 other constitutions of the world and best elements of these constitutions are adopted and this was also a vision of gandhi ji always his beautiful statement he i think even i have quoted it in many of my lectures he said i don't want my home to be walled from all sides and my windows to be stuffed let free and soothing air come from every directions to my home this was the vision of gandhi ji so in constitution also this vision is adopted by dr ambedkar that he took best things from many constitution after studying 60 constitution of various countries so you can say that constitution of india is probably one of the best constitution in the world so one of the thing highlighted in this constitution is unity in diversity and india to avoid the dis threat of disintegration of india and india you can see is a very diverse country for example the country where we are living in if you see the neighboring countries and if you see the neighborhood all speak the same language all are from the same tribal backgrounds all are from same religion but this neighbor in the neighborhood you will find more than 6 7 8 countries though it is all from one background one community one religion everything is instead of the in spite of that there are many countries but if you see india it's unique india has almost 14 official languages more than 2000 dialects and many religions and even uh, hindu religion which is predominant religion in india is not actually one religion there are so many sects sub sects and so many deities and so many diversity within hinduism also hinduism is more than a religion it is a culture you can say because the word hindu is not mentioned in any of the hindu scriptures upanishads or upanishads or bhagavad gita or anything it is more a culture within hinduism also you will find lot of diversity also with the other religion also for example among muslims there are malayalam speaking muslims there are tamil speaking muslims there are you know urdu speaking muslims and there are kashmiri language speaking muslims so there are diversity within muslims as well within hindus as well among christians as well so you can see very you know huge diversity in india many languages many cultures but it is one country and this is ensured through the co great concept of unity in diversity and also we can see that since ambedkar is from the untouchability background of untouchability untouchability is prohibited in indian constitution you can say that to great extents we have achieved this though there are definitely traces of untouchability is found in many parts of the country but still you can say that to through the indian constitution we have achieved it to the great extent also any kind of discrimination based on religion race sex or place of birth is also prohibited so this is also 
you know, India is one and India has, you know, conquered all kind of these kind of evils through the great message and uh, implementation of the great constitutional spirit. And these are some of the important things. And also Indian constitution advocates an egalitarian society. What is egalitarian means a society with equal opportunity based on justice, equality, liberty, and secularism. As some of our speakers also highlighted, secularism is um, a, you know, added to the preamble through the amendment. It was not there initially. But if you see, secularism was explained in the constitution and the spirit of Indian constitution was always secular. But the word secularism did not, you know, was not there in the preamble because there is different forms of secularism. Western secularism is different than cost secularism we understand in India. In some form of secularism, there is no appreciation towards religion. But India secularism is different. Indian secular Indian constitution has article number 25, which guarantees freedom of religion. And article number 26, which guarantees freedom for management of religious affairs. So every religion is respected. There is a freedom to practice religion. There is a freedom to propagate religion. There is a freedom to, you know, have a faith in any religion or to change any religion. All this and to manage religious affairs. This freedom is there in India. So Indian constitution is always secular. These are the great values of Indian constitution. Also, you can see in the preamble of Indian constitution, so many things are mentioned, which is uh, highlighting and ensuring that we have a free, democratic, and progressive society. It says, we the people of India having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic, Republic of India, Republic, and to secure all its citizens justice, which is social, economic, and political justice, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith, and worship, equality of status and opportunity, and to promote among them all fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and unity and integrity of the nation. You can see that it encompasses everything. And uh, it makes sure that uh, India is a great nation. Also, you can see that uh, there are some artworks in Indian constitution. For example, in the part third of Indian constitution, this is the original picture which talks about fundamental rights. And many of you know what this picture is about. This picture is of Rama, Sita and Lakshman. And this is particularly added and you know, this picture is added based on certain meanings. And you know, there was uh, Nandalal Bose from Shantini Ketan who were overseeing the insertion of the artworks in various parts of constitutions. And here, particularly in the fundamental rights, the picture of Rama, Sita, and Lakshman is added because you can see that the Rama, Sri Rama in Indian tradition is depicted as an impartial and generous person. And Rama Raja means a just and impartial rule giving equal rights to all. Also Sri Ram, he befriended Nishadraj, the person from lower caste. And also he accepted semi-eaten fruit from tribal woman Shabari. And also he said, I am bound to practice Raj Dharma, which means a just rule without partiality and discrimination. This is what, you know, Rama has a great uh, symbol of, you know, Ram Mariyada Purushottama. We add when we say Rama, Rama means it's a generous person and he's a just person. So, but, you know, this is again, you know, today, how we understand Rama is different. Sometimes, you know, people use religion for different things. For example, there were so many incidents of lynching happened in India and people, uh, you know, they declared a slogan of Jai Shri Ram and you know lynch somebody, then it is not a proper representation of Rama. And you know, imagine, for example, if you are walking in some remote place, and if you suddenly hear the chanting Jai Shri Ram, in the today's scenario, what do you feel? Will you feel secure? Will you feel peace? If not, then it's not a proper religion. 
And this is not only I'm talking about one religion. Sometimes people use word Allahu Akbar for wrong things. You know, when you have a society where Allahu Akbar and Jai Sri Ram and any kind of this kind of slogans ensure peace and people feel that I am in a secure area, then it is a proper following and understanding of the religion. So this is how in this artwork also Rama is highlighted in this way. And we should bring back that Rama to our society as well, which is highlighted in India, uh, highly highlighted in Indian constitution. And social equality and development through practical steps also there in Indian constitution. Sometimes, you know, theory, beautiful theories. Indian constitution has a beautiful theory, of course, when we follow it. And we are following to many extent and it's definitely ensured safety and liberty and development of our country. Today, when I see Indians are there everywhere in the world, our technicians and our engineers and our doctors are serving every part of the world. If somebody has acquired this development, this education, this progress in their life, this is because of the opportunity given by the Indian constitution. When there is no freedom given by any constitution and any society, then they cannot be a very developed citizens of any part of the world. So this is all because of Indian constitution. Also, some of the practical steps is reservation to the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. This also helped a lot. And reservation to the SCBC, social, uh, socially and economically backward classes, and really, uh, linguistic and religious minorities. Many people, and there are, when you say religious and linguistic minorities, it is not only Muslims or Christians. You will find, for example, Manipal Institute is a very famous institute for medical and engineering studies. They are Konkani speaking religious minorities. They are Brahmins, upper caste Brahmins. It is owned by upper caste Brahmins. But they, there is a privilege and special status for Konkani speaking linguistic minority because their language is Konkani. So many upper caste Brahmins get free seat there in the Manipal institution because of the religious and linguistic minority. So this is you know, a kind of assurance. I would say that if in India, there is an appropriate representation based on religion and other divisions, then it will be more safe and people will feel more a kind of confidence will be developed. So based on the religion, based on ethnicity and based on all these divisions, there should be proportional representation. This may be more beautiful idea of India. And if this happens, India will be definitely more prosperous. And equality and liberty and fraternity and religious freedom all these are ensured in Indian constitution. It is given in Indian constitution. And this made our country a great country. And uh, in today's situation, if you see, constitution is harbinger of social change. But reality is at least half one. Whatever said in the constitution, we have achieved a lot. But we are still, there are a lot of things to achieve. A lot of things are not achieved yet. There are a lot of things to be achieved. That's why on the day of Republic Day, we as a layman of India, common citizens of India, should always make sure that we will enshrine these qualities within our life. We will promote these ideas in our society. And we will ensure that every religious minorities, every religious groups, and every citizen of India will develop these qualities, which is you know, propagated by the Indian constitution. So now it's the time for me to tell the story. I'm almost in the middle of my presentation. So the story of the father and the child. When you say India, India is not uh, India means not the only the borders of the country. India means not only the rivers of the country. India is not Ganges or you know Himalaya. India ultimately means Indians, human beings. So ultimately, you know, the benefit of the constitution should reach the common Indian. And common Indian should enshrine these qualities to adopt these qualities and change himself. So the story says that father comes home in the evening after all day work. And usually many of you are fathers. We can see that our children, one of our child who is growing, maybe 10 year old, 11 year old, 12 year old, he will come near and say, our oh, father, how was the day? And he uh, comes with so many demands, so many questions. 
and father usually is not interested to answer those questions he cannot avoid it also because if it is child it is a girl means then he cannot avoid at all and if it is a boy means sometimes he try to adopt and it's also sometimes you know it's nature so the boy came and asked so many questions to the father father then thought i am busy now i have to you know take a shower i have to have a cup of tea then i have to get ready for my you know other affairs so he said okay i'll give you some homework he had a newspaper in his hand and there was a picture of the world bank he he tore those newspaper into pieces and he asked the child fix it okay fix the whole world map together and by that time i'll come back because he wanted some relaxation the boy he was looking at those pieces of the paper then he found out that a easy idea to fix the whole thing in 5 minutes he fixed everything and when father came he said i am ready my dear dad i have fixed everything world map is ready father was astonished this young boy he is not well aware of geography how could he fix it boy said there was a picture of a man behind this man and i know how to fix the man head then shoulders then limbs then stomach then legs then feet fixed everything and turned the paper and it was exactly the whole world map and the father said the great moral of the story is when the man is set right the whole world is set right so india will become great when all indians adopt these constitutional values so this is the great message of the story continuing with the subject welfare of the people is also part of every belief india is a country of many religions for example hindu religion says shubhamastu nityam loka samastha sukhino bhavantu om shanti 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 so this is the hindu philosophy or sarve jana sukhino bhavantu or so like that there are so many status what is sarve jana sukhino bhavantu means let all people live in happiness so it's like what a great message and uh, subhamastu nityam let good things happen every day loka samastha sukhino bhavantu let the whole world live in happiness great message if hinduism so real hindu is one who ensures that happiness is not only for me happiness is for their in all our neighborhood this is the great message of hinduism also it is there in the bible it says the one who blesses others is abundantly blessed those who help others are helped it's in proverbs chapter 11 verse 25 there are so many other biblical verses also you will find similar quotations many quotations from quran as well it says chapter number 3 verse number 111 it says kuntum khaira ummatin you are the best community ukhrijat lin nas rise for the good of the mankind ta'maruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhauna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah means you enjoy good and forbid evil and believe in god so you can see the common you know nature of the teachings that everybody every religion wishes for good of others and a better society and a prosperous society and a peaceful society so this is what is the you know essence of every religion india is a country of many religions so this should happen also because the religious freedom given in india means what we have to follow this and this will positively impact society as well there is a very famous foundation called religious freedom and business foundation it's a global foundation it says seven ways religious freedom contributes to the sustainable development if you have religious freedom in any country it will foster respect it reduces corruption it end engenders peace means create peace it encourages border freedom it develops the economy it overcomes the over regulation you need not have to over regulate because when people are good people are there you know there will be less corruption and also it multiplies trust important thing is when you follow religion when you are religious people as per this foundation and as per the statistics there are so many statistics when there is religious freedom when there is uh, 
you know, a kind of peace in the society, then there will be definitely a positive impact on economy and development and GDP and everything. Today, our GDP is going down. One of the factors is mistrust and lack of understanding and lack, lack of religious harmony. These things directly impact the, you know, economy. So I have so many examples to quote. I don't want to quote all those things. That's why facts based on the statistical study is what? Countries with lower level of religious hostility and government restriction on religion are ranked higher in primary education and health. This is the global statistics. If you have more religious freedom and more religious practice, then there will be more primary education and health. Technical training and higher education, technologies and ready, uh, technological readiness, innovation, communication and transport infrastructure, market efficiency, business sophistication, financial market development, labor efficiency, and wealth, wealth creation, all these are there. So the religious freedom and uh, you know practice of religion and a peaceful coexistence of religions will have a big positive impact in every society. And this is very much required in India because we are religion, we are country of multiple religions. So this is very important. And what are some of the threats of against the constitutional spirit we are facing in India? Or generally, what is some of the threats? And these threats are also there in India. Wherever this is there, this is the these are the threats threats against the you know progressive society and our constitution and uh, ensure so many things and uh, you know polarization is a threat against constitutional spirit and also hate and communalism is a threat against communal you know the uh, constitutional spirit religious bias majoritarianism linguistic bias bigotry of all kinds religious fanaticism blind beliefs and superstitions Religious freedom is not blind belief. You might have heard about one Naidu in Andhra Pradesh recently killed two of his daughters. You know, the whole family, they joined together and they you know, cooperated each other to kill two of their daughters in the name of religion and superstition. So superstitious beliefs and blind beliefs also is very counterproductive. So these are all against the constitutional spirit. And uh, bias and polarization is self-defeating, actually. There is a very beautiful Turkish proverb which says, forest was shrinking, but trees kept oating because axe of its handle is made of wood. Forest is shrinking, but still forest is oating to the axe, it seems, because the handle of the axe is from wood. So it belongs to our community, let's oat them. So this was the spirit. So this is kind of bias and polarization, which is self-defeating and which is very harmful. We have to come out of this bias and polarization. And constitution ensures that democracy should be a way of life. Democracy is not for one day. Democracy should not be limited to election and voting power. Every citizen should have a right to participate in democratic right every day and right to protest and talk against injustice. All institutions should remain independent and just. Courts should remain independent and just. And pillars of democracy, particularly media, should remain independent and pro-people. So the, all this should, ha should happen. So we should try to develop these things in Indian society. And finally, I'm almost reaching end of my presentation. As I told you, after two stories, I'm coming to a very small Urdu poet. And this highlighted some of the threats we are facing in India. Maybe, of course, India is still a great nation, a great country, and we are really enjoying freedom and a mutual respect and harmonious living in India. But there are a lot of threats as well, and there are a lot of challenges as well. As a responsible citizens, we always should be concerned about these things, which is ruining us, ruining our development, ruining our economy, and ruining our harmonious and uh, inclusive living, you know, this should always be a ma ma matter of concern for us. This song says, Ek Hindu tha, ek Muslim tha, wo dost the ab nahi rahe. Small, very small sentence, 
बट इट मेक्स लॉट ऑफ मीनिंग एक हिंदू था एक मुस्लिम था वो दोस्त थे अब नहीं रहे एक मंदिर था एक मस्जिद था वो पास थे अब नहीं रहे एक लड़की थी क्या गलती थी क्यों जल गई अब नहीं रही एक देश था वो भारत था जो सबका था अब नहीं रहा सबका इज अ ब्यूटिफुल स्लोगन बट एवरी इंडिविजुअल इंडियन फील्स दैट सबका साथ सबका विकास इज रियली आई एम एक्सपीरियंसिंग इट एंजॉइंग इट देन इट विल बी अ ग्रेट इंडिया इट शुड नॉट बी यू नो ओनली स्लोगन इट शुड बी अ रियालिटी देन इंडिया विल बी अ ग्रेट कंट्री लेट एस ऑल स्ट्राइव फॉर द ग्रेट इंडियन country and to inculcate constitutional spirit of inclusive living and harmonious living within us thank you very much for patient listening